husband folded the covers back, stood, hesitated, and walked out of our dark bedroom before our alarm rang. I thought about saying, everything okay, hon? But I'd stayed up late grading exams. If I had spoken, invited him back into bed, would that have kept him safe? We lived in Juneau, Alaska, between the ocean and a retreating glacier, a dynamic landscape that challenged and nurtured us. A 42-foot sailboat, our Alaska home for seven years before our son was born, floated at the city dock, blanketed by a crust of snow, but otherwise ready for action. The week before, nine-year-old Glenn and I ran a mile in the annual Mendenhall Glacier Race, while his father joined the pack of 10-kilometer trail runners. I'd stood with our son, cheering Jim's strong finish, aware of how I still found my husband attractive after 20 years. Now, though, it wasn't his broad-shouldered presence, but the scent of coffee that pulled me from the stolen hour of sleep. Thin light bathed the second-floor room from a window above the bed. I plumped a pillow behind my back and thanked him as I reached for the mug. A marine biologist... I taught at the university and did research on harbor seals and stellar sea lions in Glacier Bay National Park. Raised in the Midwest, I came to Alaska at 27 to study humpback whales. My husband, a strong-willed field scientist from Utah, was hired at 21 to assist a grizzly bear biologist on the Alaska Peninsula. Chosen for his hunting and mountaineering experience, all that summer, Jim carried and slept with a 12-gauge shotgun. He stepped close and set his mug on the night table. Over jeans and a faded polo shirt, he wore twill coveralls. I recognized the look and stance that meant he wanted to make love. His proximity sent an enticing shiver up my spine. But I said I had a lot to do. Finish a research proposal, give a lecture, and meet with advisees. How about you? I asked, thinking he should know work mornings were not good for sex. One early hour at my office equaled three in the afternoon. He ran his hand through thick, chestnut-blonde hair. Downshifting clumsily from seduction to business, he settled in the chair. I've got some vinyl touch-ups on the skylight. Then I'm going to the harbor to check on the boat. Can you schedule the broker's tour? We were putting our home up for sale to build a smaller, energy-efficient house on a steep acre with an ocean view. I was reluctant to sell the home where we'd raised our son... I'd never lived anywhere I loved more. But I said, sure. He stood and gave me a one more chance look. I reached for my notebook, and he left. As I made the bed, I heard Jim cough several times. I've got to get my work under control, I thought, tugging the sheet and quilt tight across the mattress. Lately, for me, no mornings were good for sex. Maybe I should start seeing that marriage counselor again. His coughing turned harsh, like a dull axe splitting wood. I hurried to the living room. He lurched up the stairs, arms stuck out as if groping in the dark, even though golden light streamed in. Honey, what's wrong? His eyes jittered side to side. For a second, they locked on mine. I, I don't know, he gasped, staggering to the couch. I grabbed the phone and punched 911.